So now we're going to look at section 10.2, which is products and quotients of functions. That means we're going to be multiplying and dividing. So when you multiply, you might see the dot in between. Or um, you might see it again as f dot g of x. So the dot represents multiplying. Keep in mind that the domain of a product of functions is the same as the domain common to the original function. So again, what that means is if they're both an element of reals, then um, the new domain would be an element of reals as well. You just take whatever's common between the two domains. So let's look at example one. If we have f of x equals x plus 2 squared minus 5, and g of x is 3x minus 4, Find the product and determine the domain. Now let's find the domain first, because the domain is actually the easiest part here. The first function here, f of x, what kind of function is that? Problem. A parabola. What's the domain of a parabola? Um, yeah. Element of the reals. Good. Now the next one, what kind of function is that? Yeah. Linear. And what's the domain of linear? Um, yeah. Right. So when I multiply these two together, the do new domain is still going to be an element of the reals because that's what's going to be common between the two domains. So again, you can look at each domain separately and then determine the new domain. What if there weren't some there? All right, so I find the product here. We have to multiply it out. So first of all, I have this x plus 2 squared. Be careful. x plus 2 squared means x plus 2 times x plus 2. And now I'm going to subtract the 5 from that. So first, I have to FOIL this part out which will give me x squared plus 4x plus 4, and then I'll subtract that 5 from it. So let's just finish this off. When I have the 4 and the minus 5, I get x squared plus 4x minus 1. So that is my f of x function. That part's the f of x. Now I have to multiply that by g of x. g of x is 3x minus 4. How do you multiply a big polynomial like this? Foil. Kind of FOIL, yeah. Except you have to make sure that each of the front parts gets multiplied to each of the back parts. You actually did do this in grade 10 um, when we there was a section where you multiplied large polynomials. So we'll go x squared times 3x is 3x cubed. x squared times minus 4 is minus 4x squared. Then I go to the middle term here, 4x times 3x is 12x squared, and then 4x times minus 4 is minus 16x. Now we're going to go to this last term, so minus 1 times 3x is minus 3x, and minus 1 times minus 4 is plus 4. So again, I'm just kind of foiling, but it's a bigger foil. To finish it then, we just have to combine like terms. So I see I have some x squareds, and I have some x's, so when we combine them together, we'll get 3x cubed plus 8x squared minus 19x plus 4. And that would be the product. So here we could find the domain, because this is a cubic function. So again, we said the domain is an element of reals. How about the range of a cubic function? It's, it's also an element of reals, right? It's an element of reals because a cubic function is going to go up and down forever. So there we have our domain and our range based on our new graph. The domain, though, remember, we could predict it earlier. We already knew the domain right from the beginning question. So here we're looking for division now. We've got f and g are functions, so you can write it again in two different ways. But here the domain part's a little different. Because we're dividing, the domain of a quotient function is the same as the domain of the two original functions have in common, except that g cannot equal 0. So that's an important part. Since we cannot by, divide by 0, we cannot have the denominator equal to 0. So let's look at example 2. Here it just says find the domain for f times g and f divided by g where f is root of x minus 1 and g is x minus 2. Now, all we have to do again to find domain is look at your two domains separately. So what's the domain of this root function? And it might help you to remember what it looks like. 
Remember, this is a root function that's been one, one unit to the right. Right, so it's going to look something like that, which means that my domain is x is greater than or equal to 1. Because again, it's moved one unit to the right. How about this other graph, g of x? What would that, what kind of function is that? Linear, so it's going to look something like that. So that's an element of reals. Good. Now let's come up with h, which is f times g. So f times g, what would be my domain? Or what's the domain that would overlap between these two? So the domain for f times g is just going to be the domain in common, which is x is greater than or equal to 1. Now let's look at the other one, f divided by g. Okay, so f divided by g, again my domain is going to be that x is greater than or equal to 1, because that's what's in common. But what x value here are we not going to be allowed to have? Because remember that here we're dividing by g of x. So this function is x minus 1 on the top under the root, but then x minus 2 on the bottom. So we have to eliminate your non-permissible values. So yep, we say here that x can't be 2. Because if x was 2, we'd get a 0 in the denominator. So at the end of this, we just put that x cannot equal 2. So again, your domain is um, greater than or equal to 1, but it can't equal 2 because if it if you plugged in a 2 in the denominator, you'd get 0. So that is non-permissible. So here we're going to start by dividing f, uh, sorry, it's actually g divided by f. So the g function here is going to go on top, and the f function is going to go on the bottom. So we have h of x equals x squared plus x minus 6 over 2x plus 6. But we can always simplify these, not always, but sometimes we can simplify these. Remember, when you simplify a fraction, you have to divide out a common factor. So if I factor the top, we get x plus 3 and x minus 2. And if I factor the bottom, I see there's a GCF of 2. So if I divide out the 2, I'm left with x plus 3. So looking at this, is there a common factor on the top and the bottom that can be divided out? It's x plus 3, right? So that means I'm left with x minus 2 over 2. So my new equation is x minus 2 over 2 for h of x. So let's find the domain of these now. The first function, f of x here, is a line, which means the domain is an element of reals. The second function here is a parabola, so the domain is also an element of reals. So I can say that my new function has a domain that's an x as an element of reals, but there is going to be a value that's not allowed here. Because if you look, there is an x in the denominator at the start. So what would make this factor equal to 0? Negative 3. Negative 3. Right, so we'd say here that x cannot equal negative 3. Now, at negative 3, what's actually happening? It's a whole. Good. So remember that whenever you have a factor on top and the bottom that can cancel out, you actually have a hole left in that spot. Okay, so let's just graph g divided by f, okay? So I do believe that you guys could put your f and your g and everything on here, but let's just graph the, the g divided by the f. So um, we're going to start, let's skip the undefined for now. Let's start at negative 2 and negative 2. So it's going to be here. Then we go to negative 1 and negative 1.5. Then we go to 0 and negative 1. Then we go to 1 and negative 0.5. What kind of shape is this making? It's linear. It should be linear, yeah? That's because really this is 1 over 2x minus 2 over 2. So really, this is a linear function. So yeah, we're going to get this straight line. Which one are you doing first? I'm only graphing, this is g divided by f. Okay. So it's going to look something like that. Now, the only thing you have to put on here is this spot where it was 0 over 0, which is undefined. So remember that 0 over 0 gives you a hole. So at x is minus 3, 
there is going to be a hole in your graph. So you actually have to make that little circle to represent the hole in your graph where the graph does not exist. So you can take a read through this slide then and then start on these textbook questions.